Okay, I'm sitting in the Tesla with Kent Larson and um, I basically picked him up. He came from uh, the University of Twente, gave a presentation and I'm on, on my way to Rotterdam and he's driving the Tesla. And I'm going to ask him about Euro v, European innovation in smart cities. Uh, Kent, but first, did you drive a... You talk about autonomous driving, innovation, yeah, yeah. electric, everything. Have you ever driven a Tesla yourself? Well, I have driven an electric vehicle, but this is the first time I have driven a Tesla. Aha. Uh -huh. Beautiful machine. Yeah? yeah? Of course, American products. You must love American products, right? Mm, I like I drive a Volvo. Oh, you drive a <laughs> Volvo, yeah, which is Swedish. So, what, what was your impression about driving this? Uh, well, this is, I think it's the ultimate boy toy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, well, it's, it's, it's beautifully engineered. It, it's smooth. It's intuitive. I was mentioning a minute ago. You take your your foot off the gas pedal, and it slows down. You can you can if you if you get the feel of it, you don't have to use the brake. And, and I I understood that within the first minute. Mm -hmm. So they have the interface right. It feels right. These vehicles. It's, it's about the feel of the road and the, yeah. So all this innovation about the Europeans and then the, the Americans nail it. The Americans yeah. <laughs> come up with, you know, we always thought that Germans were the best building the, the next generation yeah. cars, but now suddenly an American Silicon Valley guy yeah. comes up. Yeah. And West I, Coast, yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I, I think you, you have the world's greatest engineers in Germany. I think, I, I believe there's a culture of innovation, though, in the U.S. that Europe has not caught up to yet. I, I, I think it's changing. The, the, the entire world is catching up with the U.S., but I think we still have we still have an edge on, you know, th thinking out of the box, you know, trying new things, rapidly iterating. I, it, I see in German German uh, universities companies, there's a lot more planning, you know, they're a lot more methodical about how they approach things. Yeah. In the U.S., it's, let's just try it. Yeah. If it doesn't work, we'll try it again. And we can try it three times before they finish their report. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about European innovation because you mean yeah. you basically are into smart cities, smart yeah. systems, electric, uh, uh, you know, uh, vehicles which can drive themselves, yeah. and and also yeah. making homes much smarter with technology that yeah. lose less space and make it more organic. Right. But you also uh, you always come up with Paris and Amsterdam and Denmark yeah. as the ideal cities and not the old-fashioned American. Uh, let's well, I think put a city around the car. I think the I think the cities that evolved organically before the car are the most interesting and livable places mm -hmm. in the world. In fact, you go to China where they're building new new cities entirely based on the car. Uh -huh. And you talk you talk to leaders in industry, where do you go for a vacation? They come to European cities <laughs> because they like those cities, but they don't use them as a model. I think not that, yet. Okay, not so yet. these 400 cities of more than 10 million each they're yeah. building now. Yeah. Th that's more the old-fashioned American model. It's the American model. It's it's, it's the LA model. Mm. And the model is you separate the functions, you spread everything out, you let everybody that can afford it buy a car, you build a road that connects every place with every other place, and you make sure there's a parking space when you get there. Yeah. And that's so then one third of LA is parking space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so the new model is more the old fashioned I think kilometers. I, I think we can learn from the past. It's it's not duplicating the past because there are many things that don't work well. But if we can but I think the fundamental you know planning methodology if you have you have in tight integrated neighborhoods mm -hmm. where you can live and work and play and shop and find recreation in a high density community old-fashioned European ideas old-fashioned Euro European idea but then you overlay that with all the new possibilities you bring in autonomous vehicles and new energy production new 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 ways of creating space and uh, new, new, new food production. The things we're thinking about. Yeah. Then I think you can have the best of the old with the best of the future, and I, I think that's that has to be the new model. Okay, and that's basically your pitch. Now, yeah. how will this happen? Because national governments are basically not doing much in Europe and are do not doing much in yeah. America. Uh, how how do we get that innovation started? And where are the most interesting projects happening now? Well, they're they're in cities. It's, they're driven by mayors. 
they're they're driven by companies, you know, working with local governments. The, the mo almost all the innovation that you find in countries is not happening at the national level. It's happening. It's happening at the city at the city level. Yeah, uh, especially in America, where basically national actually, governments are are at the moment yeah. stalemate. But also, you see that in Europe. Well, you see it less so in Europe, but still, it's the mayors. It's the mayors that have to take care of the people. They have to see that the garbage is picked up, mm -hmm. you know, and, the, and that and that the, the water supply is is clean, and they they're responsive to local daily life concerns of their residents. Where, yeah. where at the national level, people can afford to be more ideological, and things get to be more more abstract. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why you find in, it, we're very polarized in the U.S. right now at the national level, even the state level. But yes. you don't find that so much it's in cities. You, you, even even cities in in the South where the, the mayors the mayors can um, a mayor of a of a Republican city in the South can have a fruitful conversation with the mayor of Boston. Yeah. And, and I know that for a fact because I was at a dinner with both the mayor mayors from two from both areas, and, yeah, and they, they have work, the, they yeah. have the same concerns. They're not talking. They may be they may have very different attitudes about uh, national political issues, but when it comes to the day to day life in the city, they basically agree okay. on everything. Okay, so mayors and cities in general yeah. are much more interesting as an object of innovation yeah, to absolutely. get all these new things about mobility and food production yeah, and living absolutely. and education, and they're much more integrated and smaller and with a smaller footprint and which you're basically yeah, promoting sure. Sure. what is an interesting uh, what's the most interesting city in America which basically gets there East Coast West Coast uh, somewhere uh, well I think I think Seattle on the West Coast and Boston on the on the East Coast very interesting although a lot of things are happening in in many cities uh, the you know New York is just uh, put in a marvelous network of bike lanes Yes, we, you can bike there now. You yeah. can bike there now. Slowly, I, I lived in New York for a long time. I, w I would bike in New York City, and it was very dangerous when I lived there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually you actually see mothers biking with children now in New York City. It's amazing. Yeah, so unbelievable that we see that happening in uh, in New York. In Europe, uh, you've been you've meet, met a lot of mayors. Uh, you met uh, our mayors here in Rotterdam and Amsterdam and Den Haag, mm -hmm. and you met some uh, people in in other countries. Mm -hmm. Where is the where's where do you see pockets of innovation here? I think most of the the major cities in Northern Europe are, are quite innovative. I'm always impressed. I think I think that's where the action is. I think that's where urban innovation will first be prototyped and tested. Well, wait, do you talk about London or Berlin no, I don't think so or much. about? Uh, I think it's I think it's not so much those huge international cities. I think it's cities like uh, like Hamburg and, mm -hmm. and Helsinki and Copenhagen. And I, th I think those are those those are where the uh, Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, w one thing about European mayors, they tend to have access to more resources than you, the mayors of the U.S. Really? They tend to be able. Even to, though they're basically elected there, and yeah. here they're appointed of, uh, in general. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I think it just has has to do with, with with tax policy, and also we don't we don't have EU funding the, the way. You're, you have in Europe, so I think there, there are pockets. resources that are that are available that we don't tend to find in the U.S. Yeah. Now, if you talk about real things, real atoms, and mm -hmm. especially cities, yeah. everything goes unbelievable slow. Yeah. In 20 years, how will the cities not basically look the same here in the, in Northern Europe, or will there be fundamental some fundamentally something changes? Do you more have to wait 50 years before really something changes? Well, I'll tell you what I hope happens. I, 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 what I hope is the central cities will continue in the direction they're going in, which is to gradually make it more convenient for people to not own a car. Mm -hmm. You know, the biking and mass transit, and ultimately when we get to shared, and car sharing, shared yeah. car sharing. But when we get to autonomous car sharing, I, I think that will. Create so what great new year are it, do, do we have 10% of the cars which are autonomous and which basically can be shared? What year are we talking about? Well, if, it, if you have the proper public policy in place yep. and, and liability issues dealt with, I think it can happen very quickly. Yeah, what, I think, 10 I th years? I think it can happen in 10 years, yeah. In I, 10 but years? I, but I think you could have 
viable pilot projects within a couple of years. Mm -hmm. that would point and if we have 10% of the cars, if they are uh, already autonomous driving, you know, auto uh, vehicles which you can use whenever you need mm -hmm. them, what, what, what percentage do we need to really change city life? Because I can imagine if you if 10% of the cars are uh, you know can be at a, are at your fingertips and can come up and pick you up and bring you away that already that you don't need 50% change I think you don't need 80% when is the yeah, big yeah. when is the big change Well, I don't know exactly, but I do think I I see young people unlike us mm -hmm. <laughs> our generation Yeah, we're driving here in this nice yeah. Tesla. In this nice yeah. Tesla, yeah. you know. Young people don't care about owning cars, by no. and large. Mm -hmm. they, they really don't care. The same thing about owning houses. They think of mobility as a service. Housing should be a service. Mm -hmm. Just like their mobile phone service. You know, books well, are books are in here in Holland, the, the kids love to have a car, and they love yeah. to buy a house. They love to buy a house. They love. So, I mean, they well, always I, say that, but here, the young people, yeah. when they don't buy a house, they, it's because they don't have the money, and uh, when they don't buy a car, I means especially if you if you really live in the center of the city, you can have parking yeah. spots. Yeah, and if you need to wait five years for a parking spot, yes. Well, but that's more than a reason. I mean, it's not it's not black and white, obviously, but increasingly. Just arguing with you. Yeah, no, no. I, but increasingly, young people are 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 not buying cars. I mean, that's what the data shows. Mm. That's what that's yeah, just true. anecdotally what I see. With my students, mm -hmm. I have I have a whole crew of uh, graduate students. Very at few, MIT. At MIT, yeah. and of course yeah. they live in the city. They don't have a lot of money, but it, but if you talk to them about, um, yeah, you can go. If you talk to them about uh, what they think the future holds for them, most of them say, "We'll live in the city. Uh, it it will be uh, convenient to not." Own a car. There'll be a, there'll be alternatives, and I have I have a couple of students who don't even have driver's licenses. They just say I will never drive, mm. and I think I think that is the trend. Now it's not you don't find that in Texas, no, but you find it increasingly in the in the cities on the coast where you have where you have the kind of infrastructure that allows people to live without a car. So in 20 years, how will those you know, not Texas kind of city, but New York, Boston, Amsterdam, uh, very high densities. How will life be there? I think life will we have fifty percent of the cars which we have today? Oh, I think we'll have less than. Well, I think we'll have we'll have less than fifty percent private cars. Yeah. I think you'll have a lot of vehicles that will be that will be shared use. I see that with friends that are my age. They they I, I have a good friend uh, couple. Lots of money. They gave up their private car in New York City. Mm -hmm. They gave up their fancy house on the Upper East Side, and they rent and they they use um, car sharing, <laughs> and they use Uber. They use Uber for everything. Oh yeah. Uber is fantastic in New York. You like Uber? I love in it. Boston. Uber's great. Yeah. Why wouldn't I like it? Compared to you have better taxi service in Europe, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in New York the taxi service is fantastic. In New York is really yeah, an interest in Uber. I don't even know anything. You don't own Uber, stock. Okay, I good. don't own stock, but Uber, the cars are newer, the drivers are more friendly, it's typically less money, they come right to your door uh, on time. Mm -hmm. And when you get to your destination you get out and you're charged automatically. Okay, there's. I, you there, love it. There's no advantage for a cab. In, in there's Boston. a lot of fighting on Uber. Every taxi driver here in the European city says, you know, I have all these rules I have to obey to. Well, they're right. And they don't. Well, they're right, and that's not fair. It's not fair. It's, and we have to deal with it. Yeah. But I'm not talking about the politics of it and the no. regulation. I mean, that has to get sorted out. Yeah. And I think Uber has been way too aggressive in many cases. But just as a service, it works beautifully. Okay. Well, you're going to give a presentation. What are you going to talk about in a minute? I'm I'm going to talk about another Tesla. What I believe. Uh, Did you see in Skip Hole? Did you land in Skip Hole? Did you see that we only have Teslas? Yeah, we I go didn't, straight. I, I didn't see that. Okay, you arrived in Holland. Yeah. There's a hundred Teslas in front of Skip Hole. Yeah. Left here. Okay. Okay. But uh, okay, you're going to talk about what? I'm going to talk about our ideas for what enables three things in cities. Uh, high performance, entrepreneurial, more livable communities. Cities are made up of a network of these um, more highly functioning neighborhoods.
Okay. And all the systems that allow that to happen. Yeah, yeah. And we'll all have it done at 2050? <laughs> no. No. 2100? I think I don't think it'll ever be done. I think it's a work in progress forever. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you.